Welcome, chosen one. Hey guys, welcome to the Ace of Plays channel. For today's video, I want to show you a couple of games that I played with a great swords deck made by none other than, of course, Insomnia228. Now you guys know I'm a big fan of Insomnia's decks, especially their great swords deck, because, you, know, you know, with every patch, there's a, an updated version of great swords made by Insomnia, and I'm always having a really good time with them, so... You know, Crimson Curse has launched, and this deck does contain a few Crimson Curse cards, like Sigvald, you know, for the pinging, that, you know, <laughs> great source benefit from that. Uh, Primal Savagery, it's a pretty cool one, just a, a good value card, 7 for 5, if you get the uh, death blow off, which we usually are able to, because we are pinging down our opponent's units, you know, pretty efficiently, so that's pretty good, and of course Regis Bloodlust for some uh, some control a card that in my opinion is probably too good but you know just never mind that i'm playing the cards so i can't really complain too much right now but uh one day i'll get to rant about regis bloodlust so yeah speaking of regis bloodlust there's enraged ifrit taking out our herald hound snout which is a shame because that means that we can't really capitalize too much on these uh, skulls that we have on the melee row. The Sigvald can ping the skulls, turning one damage into two, but, you know, it's not really... It's not really that valuable. It's actually not valuable at all. Unless we, for some reason, want to get rid of the skulls, which we kind of don't want to do. Because it doesn't really matter. But we have Sigvald set up. Monsters generally... Not really high on removal, unless, you know, they are dead laugh control. We'll soon get nerfed. Thank you, Lord Slama. But Sigvald allows us to easily kill off the first Necker, which is pretty brilliant. And then we have just a bunch of solid discard targets. Of course, the discard package did get nerfed. Uh, Scald lost a point on its body. Berna got two provisions more expensive. But uh, was it enough to uh, make the cards unplayable? No, which is good, because we don't want cards to be unplayable. We just want them to be not auto-include. And I have seen Skellige decks not running these cards, at least not all of them. Especially Self-Wound. A lot of people are making Self-Wound without the discard package, including myself, which is great. Uh, it helps that that deck can uh, successfully, uh, reliably use Drum and Shield Maiden so primal savagery e easily takes care of that necker we get a bear abomination really good value play right there and our opponent just passes on seven cards which is probably wise because if he can't deal with sigvald then he's going to get out of control and we dealt with a bunch of his thrive units so we do take the round which is always very nice now we have avalok in this deck which can be used for you know, it can be used for a great sword. It can be used for, uh, what's his name? I was going to say Harold because they're all called Harold. But uh, his name is Dagger. Dagger Two Blades. And it can also be used for Sigvald if you want to do that. So yeah, the Drowner kind of puts our uh, longship out of commission. But the new, the new... Four provision cards, Svalblood, what's it called, Ravager? I'm always unsure about what he, what he's called. And I just scrolled past it too quickly there. Kind of wish past me would have been a little bit slower, but I think it's Svalblood Ravager. It's the, it's the guy third from the left. I mean, you know he's new. It's a pretty cool card. Could have used it to kill that Drowner, but instead I elected not to do so. And I'm instead electing to Gimpy. I'm not sure that was the right play. That, that, that's kind of the fun fun thing about first recording the games and then later doing commentary over them because you know I get to see you know, the game again, see myself play, but you know, it's a day later. Um, maybe I'm in a different mindset and I'm just looking at it thinking, was that the best play? Uh, 
Uh, of course, if I had killed the Drowner with the Ravager, I would have lost, you know, potentially two points, because it, it you know, makes the unit bleed on Bloodthirst 2. It's, it's pretty cool, I guess. So, with the Rain on board, we are playing Great Swords. It is really cool to finally see at least some Bronze Weather seeing play. Uh, you know, after they were turned down to 7 provisions, like, they're decent cards. Like, 8 for 7, usually. But a Torrential Rain obviously has really good synergy with Great Swords. And, you know, if you have a Great Sword on the board, obviously you lose the first tick, unless you already play the Great Sword, which is risky. So... I mean, you're at least looking at six extra points, maybe, if the greatsword sticks and the rain gets full value. And that suddenly makes Torrential Rain a pretty efficient card to play in this deck. So here we are contemplating... Contemplating Avalok. And then I assume my idea would be to put down Dagger Two Blades afterwards. But I, th yeah, I decide against it. That probably wouldn't have been the best play here, would it? Maybe it would, because I, I did go into bleeding mode against Woodland Spirit, and I'm a card down, and I'm going to stay a card down. And that's pretty obvious from the uh, current board state. So that was probably a mistake pushing here, right? Regis kills Regis. See, now, now I'm curious because I don't remember what I did here. So uh, right now I'm just as you know, unknowing as you guys. What happens here? So something that I didn't know when I played these games, but I, I learned later, is that Svalbard Ravager... He deals his damage and then it checks for bloodthirst. So if you if there's just one wounded unit on the board and he wounds another one, you will get the uh, bloodthirst to trigger, which is actually pretty cool. I mean, it, it makes the card a little bit better because bloodthirst two, hmm, unless you're really dedicated, which this that kind of isn't actually, then it could be a little bit hard to pull off. But you know when it's technically only bloodthirst one in most cases. Suddenly becomes a lot better card, and of course the bleeding will uh, double down on a great sword or dagger. So yeah, I put I put down the Avalok, and I assume I'm going for dagger, which is an interesting play for sure. Probably just gonna do it for the points, and then hope that we at least get our card back. But there wasn't much in the deck that I would have for next round, so... Yeah, like, Aquist won't be good. So yeah, I do decide to pass. Just accepting that I've lost card advantage. Which, you know, once you start bleeding, especially against a deck like Woodland, <laughs> it's not easy to bleed. You know, you're just accepting that, you know, you've... Uh, You've lost that card for good. But uh, honestly, I was probably a bit cocky, but also pretty confident in the uh, Dagger Herald combo. It's a 20 point play. And uh, I, you know, I do get Delirium, I do get Aquist. Of course, for full value, kind of have to play Dagger before Delirium, but we don't have last say anyway, so if, if there is tall unit removal, we're playing into it anyway, so might as well. I'm just, I'm just vaguely remembering that being my mindset, and uh, it's probably correct. Because at this point, a card down against Woodland, who still also has his ability, we're gonna need all the points we can get. And uh, turning those six from Delirium into a 12, would be really really good potentially the only way we win this game so for some reason my opponent has his own aquist that is kind of weird 
taking that sweet seven point Aquavist. No, that's how you play dragons, boy. I was kind of hoping it would hit uh, the Aquavist a little bit more because at this point, you know, there is a possibility that we're going to get Caldwell. But he would only be an eight point swing if he came over instead of a potential 20. But of course, like, with only two units on the board, we should expect him to at least be hit four times. You know, that's just, you know, logic speaking. And uh, so, yeah, he would have at least gone down to six. So it's a bit misfortunate that he went all the way down to four, but uh, it's, you know. So our opponent gets a slightly better Aquist. But uh, luckily, he gives us a fairly big target for Delirium. We don't get the 12 value, but we do get the 10. So we're at 10 points ahead. Our opponent has one card left. If that card is not bigger than 9, then we get Caldwell. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was, uh, that was pretty cool. Okay. That was the first game. Um... You know, it's, it's kind of fun to do these videos where I have forgotten a little bit about what actually happens. You know, that really makes things a bit more interesting for me as well. But uh, I, I, of course, have a second game for you guys. So let us jump into that right now. And, uh, you know, see how that goes. I honestly, I have forgotten. It might come back to me as we're watching it, but uh, <laughs> maybe it won't. <laughs> and I'll be very surprised when something crazy happens. Let us go to the second game. Yes, I remember this. The second game was against Usurper. Which, of course, is kind of a rough matchup because our ability, our leader ability, is worth quite a lot of points. You know, it's eight points in and of itself. But we are kind of relying on using it with Dagger Two Blades, so he's kind of denying us up to 16 points here, which is pretty big. And Harold only has. 13 provisions, so we only have three more provisions than him. Uh, but our deck, you know, is a bit more uh, focused on synergy. So those three provisions, you know, are, are kind of made up by uh, by uh, dagger two blades not getting those those immediate points. So this is human usurper. This might be Sir Pumpkin's Usurper. Uh, I played these games before I watched this video. I mean, I played these games before the video came out. But I'm assuming he played it on stream, maybe that same day. Or, you know, the day I played these games. So maybe that deck was already a thing. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool deck. I, I do enjoy it. And uh, if I ever get tilted, like properly tilted, especially by Dead Laugh, we will be nerfed soon, thank you Lord Slama. Then I might just pick up that deck, because it, it seems really fun. Um, I am actually working on a Morvran spy deck with you know Doppler and all humans. And it runs a lot of the same strategies as this Usurper deck, just with Morvran and you know, a little bit of synergy. And uh, it, it seems really powerful, like really powerful. That deck can put out a shit ton of points. But uh, there's there's some small tweaks I gotta make before I want to show it to you guys. But maybe tomorrow. So, what is going on with the game? Maybe I should pay attention. I'm still I'm still, you know, getting into this post commentary thing, where I uh, do commentary after playing the games. It won't just be this. Like, don't worry, guys. Like, we will do some live commentary where you look, you'll get, you know, live reactions and all that fun stuff. But uh, for now, this is what we're doing because this allows me to, you know, just just play the game by myself, just you know, sit and enjoy it as one would with a video game, and uh, you know, just record it because that's really no extra work. And then suddenly I get a really good game, and uh, I have it on video, and I can make a video for it. And you know, other times, you know, like today. I didn't really get any good gameplay that I want to turn into a video, but I had this gameplay recorded from yesterday. 
It is pretty clever. So the rain passes, but our greatsword is at 14. Now, I don't remember if this deck runs your boy Leo Bonhart. I mean, the opponent passed anyway, so like we, we get to keep this 14-point greatsword. You know, until he uh, <clears throat> goes to the graveyard. <laughs> we didn't get to keep him for long, but we did get to keep him. So we got some good cards here. Kind of looking for a way to discard that Morkvar. Didn't get it. So uh, we're going to pass. We do have Delirium. Which is kind of the backup way to get value out of Dagger. Because Delirium will put Dagger up to 10 points. So he'll be a 10 for 10. So it's not entirely lost. And of course if we drop him into a rain. Uh, or drop it onto the board. When the opponent has rain on his side. You know, then there's potential 12 points. If we have Sigvald, you know, 13, 14 up in that. So the game is not lost. Like just because we don't have our leader, the game is not lost. And most of our cards are able to, you know, function properly without our leader. But of course, against against big boy Dopplers, it is going to be tough to uh, to find enough value. Probably contemplating if I should play Sigwell first or play Avalok first and immu immunize Sigwald, or if I'm going to Avalok on Dagger. But I do go for the Sigwald. You know, probably because. You know, like Sigwald is already a 5 for 8 when you drop him down, and he's pretty hard to deal with. At 5 strength, not getting higher. Uh, not getting lower either without any effort from the opponent. So he's probably fine on his own. Um, Dagger 2 blades, on the other hand, if we just drop him down, unassumingly, you know, he can get wrecked. Uh, he can get taken out by, uh, you know, a Leo Bonhart. So yeah, uh, Shillard <laughs> sets Avalok to 1 strength, which is. Which really sucks. But now looking back at this game, uh, that shill art does tell me that this is probably uh, Sir Pumpkin's deck, because that deck is one of the very few decks that I've seen running shill art. You know, it's obviously there to counter monsters. If they're playing Count Caldwell or Old Spirit Tip, that shill art would be worth a lot of points. And also the emissaries in an otherwise non-spy deck that is also very indicative of Sir Pumpkin's Usurper, anti dead laugh, anti monsters in general, probably. Well, maybe not solitaire monsters where they're just plain big boys. Yeah, Sire comes down for tempo. And I'm looking to get Dagger Two Blades down. Probably just gonna do it right away. You know, because. Avalok is down to only one power. I mean, I'm not expecting my opponent to really have, you know, a one or two ping. But, uh, you know, if I put him down to one strength and he gets killed, you know, that kind of sucks. So I'd, I'd rather put down Dagger to get rain value, Sigvald value, and longship value. There's a, there's a lot of extra value for just playing it down there. And now he is 10 power power so you know he is his provisions worth our opponent gets slave infantry value which is fine and we get to make dagger two blades into an immune dagger two blades he has evolved immunity we're gonna get a sweet delirium there and that Dagger Two Blades is now 20 points. Happy about that. Now, what does my 
opponent going to do? He's going to just play a second slave infantry, not for a lot of value. But my boy Gimpy Gerwin, he is looking at some serious value. So there's an interesting interaction. You can actually see me highlighting the cards there. Regis damages something by four. And if it dies, you know, he banishes it. But Dagger Two Blades was not triggered. So does that mean that if it dies from the four damage, it's automatically not damaged, but just banished? Is that it? Because I would imagine even though the unit you know, is killed or disappears, that dagger should still trigger because damage hit the unit. So that's kind of a, a funky interaction. I don't really know how that works. Uh, if you guys know, then uh, let me know. I would love to share him with your wisdom. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry there hasn't been a video in a while, but uh, we've been moving. As you can see, there is a different background behind me. Uh, this is, you know, going to be my new space for recording. So yeah, that's why I've been I've been gone. And also, right now, there's not much I want to do in terms of Gwent. Like, there's not a lot of decks that I want to play. And uh, with the prevalence of control decks, it's just. I'm not incentivized to play anything fun either, so it's been kind of hard to find decks that I want to make videos about, but uh, I do have that spy deck that I'm working on, and it's actually been pretty fun, so there will probably be a video about that very soon, so uh, look out for that. Thanks again for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments what you thought, and hope I uh, hey, well, hey, hey. hope to see you again very soon. Have a good one, guys. Bye.